Okay. In this example, we will learn about the flow pane, which is another kind of scene graph, root, just like in the last example, we learn about the pane. So just like flow layout, we now have flow pane in this environment. And then we will also going to learn how you can add more than one button to the same flow layout, such as flow pane. And then we will generate all the buttons using loop just so that you can learn about different constructs. So the reason I'm doing these examples so that in a very concise example, we can review as well as learn new things. So we're gonna have a flow pane demo. We're gonna browse for the application from the JavaFX package. Don't forget to check the public static void main and inherited abstract methods. And then once you have made these choices, you click finish. So that starts a new program. Now, just like the previous one, we will gonna start out with launch. Args so that the application gets launched. And in the start method is where we're gonna be putting the code. So we're going to be using in this example, a flow pane. In the last example that we did, we called the get children method of the pane, correct? Get children method is common for all the panes. Doesn't matter their flow or pane or grid. All children represents get to the root and get me everybody who is in that tree structure. From last week, as you, as, as you may remember, that how is the root set up? There's a root and underneath root are all the nodes. Each node is either a leaf or a branch. Branch means it will hold other nodes, and leaf means it's a dead end. So button is a leaf, means button is not a container. But if it, a pane has another pane in it, then it is a root having a branch. If a pane has a button in it, then it means that the root has a leaf, because it can't go any further, that's a dead end. So here, we're gonna be calling the children and we're going to be adding some buttons to the children. So here we'll say, okay, root dot get children. In the last example, I said add all. In this example, I'm going to just say add. So this allows me to only add one item at a time. So I'll say I want to add a new button. And the value of this button will be uh, one. Make sure you grab the button class from the JavaFX package. Done. What elements now needed to be added to this code? Do we have our scene created? So we are setting the title, we are setting the scene, and we're showing the primary stage. So now when I run this program, should I see one button with the number one as its text? So that's all I have. And it's a flow pane, so things will gonna show up in a flow. Okay, now going back to what I told you earlier, that we can now create things in a loop. In order for us to create things in a loop, we will going to include this statement get children dot add in a loop. So every time the loop runs, one button gets produced. 
at the end of the loop, there will be X number of buttons produced, whatever is the duration of the loop. And then instead of calling them all one, we're going to just keep changing the text based on the loop counter. However, there is another question that raises from this that it requires a string over here. It requires a string over here. And loop counter can't be a string because otherwise it can't increment. So we're going to learn how you can convert an integer into a string just for the display purpose. Okay, so let's start out from here for integer counter equals to one counter less than equals to let's say 25 uh, counter plus plus start a loop and we enter the loop right here. Okay, so the loop should go for 25 times, exactly the way you learn in the Java 1. So it starts out with 1, ends at 25, incrementing by 1. Every time a button gets produced, we will still call the value off function, which is a function in the string class, which will help us convert our counter, which will help us convert our counter into a string value just for the purpose of displaying just for the display purpose now when you run this example notice there are 25 buttons wow a beautiful way to generate a calendar right <laughs> you're going to generate calendars Okay, now these are all unnamed buttons. Generally speaking, if you want those buttons to be tied to some kind of events, you can create a button array, and then you can populate this whole thing using that button array. So that way you will have named elements. But that's not the example over here. We were gonna add a few more things to this example. One of the things that I would like to add to this example is that we're going to go to the flow pane and we're going to change its orientation to horizontal. Now with this in place, when you run it, you will notice that your buttons are slightly spaced out. They're not running into each other as they were running before. Okay? Now notice that your very first line touches the top of the screen, correct? The top of the title bar. What we did over here, 5-5, five, five, that gives you spacing between the elements within the pane. But the next step I'll show you will actually help you add some space around the pane. So the step is to add space, to add space, around the pane you say the name of the pane dot set padding if you may remember from your internet programming course we use padding in css left padding right padding. so that's that idea is exactly the same we basically create an object of insets class and we can give it some kind of a value make sure you organize your insets from the geometry package of scene class now when you run it, you will notice that there is a gap between the first row and the top of the screen, and also there is a gap on the left corner, the left side. You know, you see this gap is not touching the baseline, and it's also giving you some gap on the right-hand side. So all these gaps are being produced through insets. And it's a flow layout. What does that mean? If I increase the, si the size of my screen, they just all keep going in the same line. 